Okay, welcome everyone. I'm just going to give it a minute or so and then we will go ahead and get started. I'm just promoting a committee member I see in the attendee world. Welcome, Juanita. All right. Our, hi. Are folks ready to get started? See some head nods, some thumbs up. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Government Transition Advisory Committee's Community Engagement Work Group. Today is Wednesday, May 24th, and we will be here from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Uh, to folks who are attending, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Julia Meyer. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the Engagement and Community Participation Manager for the transition. Um, I have asked Amy uh, to help facilitate tonight's meeting. And at the end of this meeting, I'll see if someone's willing to volunteer to help facilitate the next work group meeting, or we can volunteer Amy again, <laughs> um, if anyone wants. So next slide, please. So let me just uh, take a moment to go over some Zoom logistics. Uh, we are meeting virtually tonight. This meeting is being recorded. We have closed captioning available. To access closed captioning, click on the CC button on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Committee members, please take a moment to change your chat settings to everyone so folks listening in today can see the chat. Um, please remember that the meeting chat is part of the public record. For community members listening in, we have the Zoom Q&A feature available. You can submit questions or comments through the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. Uh, committee members, staff, we may answer questions along the way, uh, but we may not get to them. But trust me, we will read them and anything submitted through the Q&A also becomes part of the public record for this meeting. At today's meeting, we're not going to be taking verbal public comment, but folks can submit public comment at any time through, a web, through our website. There's a form on our website or by emailing us at transition at portlandoregon.gov. And you can also sign up to give verbal public comment to the Government Transition Advisory Committee at its next meeting, which is Tuesday, June 6th. Next slide, please. So the purpose of this community engagement work group is to propose a transition-wide community engagement plan to the full Government Transition Advisory Committee for its consideration. Ultimately, the full committee will recommend a transition-wide community engagement plan to the city's chief administrative officer. That's Mike Jordan. Mike Jordan is ultimately responsible by council resolution for approving and kind of maintaining both the transition plan and the community engagement plan for the transition. So we are currently envisioning three meetings of this work group, two before this work group presents an initial draft plan to the full committee at its June 20th meeting, and then one meeting after that full committee so you all can deliberate and incorporate what you heard from the full committee before you represent uh, to the full committee in July, uh, a draft plan for the full committee to consider approving. Um, this slide does say proposed schedule. Things can absolutely change, right? It can change based on the needs of this work group or the needs of the full committee. Right now, it's just a proposed schedule for us to uh, 
to operate under. And for community members listening in, any meeting that you see on this slide is already posted on the transition website. Um, at the end of tonight's meeting, I am going to be asking for volunteers uh, to work with me and staff over the next week or so before you all meet again. Um, for folks who might be interested in drafting uh, language in the plan, revising language in the plan, if there's any research or other kind of information request needs that come out of tonight's meeting. So just be thinking forward if it's something that you may want to volunteer for. Um, I certainly would, would appreciate it. And then we will next reconvene as a work group on June 7th. Um, I will note that is one day after the full committee meets. So um, it's the time though that worked for everyone, uh, everyone who's here and a few folks that aren't here who are interested in participating in this work. Um, but just a heads up, there will be that week where we have two evening meetings in a row back to back. So just take care of yourselves, appreciate everyone um, willing to help out. So just a couple things, um, Amy, I think is gonna review some, some feedback we've gotten more broadly, but a couple of things I wanted to just call your attention to. So at the next full committee meeting, that June 6 meeting I was talking about, we are gonna spend a significant period of time um, going over the upcoming milestones, significant milestones in the transition and then talking very specifically with each of those handful of milestones, what we as a transition team envision the role of the Government Transition Advisory Committee to be, both in terms of your role leading in community engagement, as well as your role advising City Council, the Chief Administrative Officer and the transition team. So it'll be incredibly detailed. It'll be on this day, we'd like you to do this. Obviously you can say yes or no to most of those things, but so that's not what we're gonna do tonight, but we will, uh, we will do that soon. And next week you will get all that information from me so you can kind of think through and digest it before we meet as a full committee. The second thing is a few of you asked, and it was a fantastic question, is, you know, is the engagement plan also the communications plan, right? Is it also the media plan? And the answer is no, but definitely they need to travel together and be mutually supportive. So yesterday, and it's totally fine if you do not have time to digest it, I shared that draft plan with you, the draft communications media plan that was created primarily by our communications manager. So we can talk more, you know, is that what you were looking for? You know, do we want to have that person come at some point to the full committee and we can kind of talk through it? But again, what we're focused on tonight is sort of the engagement arm. Yes, they need to be mutually supportive and speak to each other, but we don't also need to create from scratch a communications and media plan. Next slide, please. So this is the agenda. Um, it's also posted on the website for, for folks who may be listening in. Um, Again, the idea is really for us to have two meetings before we feel, if we feel then that, that this work group could present a draft engagement plan to the full committee. Um, we are gonna briefly, because most folks I don't think had a lot of feedback on it, review the elements of an engagement plan. But then the bulk of tonight's discussion is really on three areas, engagement tactics and the focus of our collective engagement. Second, the role of the Government Transition Advisory Committee in the engagement for the transition. And third, progress reporting around community engagement. And again, as a reminder, at the end of the meeting, um, we can, we'll ask folks not only to, to maybe volunteer for some tasks, but also to tell us, to tell me what you wanna make sure we cover in the next work group meeting so we can build an agenda that meets your needs. Next slide, please. This is the last one I'll do and I'll, I'll turn it over to Amy for more substance. I'm just trying to give some, some context and background. So um, I sent out to folks a draft uh, engagement plan that includes the elements that you see on this screen. 
There's certainly a short purpose that just describes what an engagement plan is. Then there's background, vision, values and guiding principles and objectives. Those things collectively are what I've been referring to as a community engagement framework. They were built off the draft community engagement framework of the Charter Commission that then the Independent District Commission and the Salary Commission have also sort of modified to meet their needs. I had the benefit of meeting with all of you one on one and, and everyone else who's not here on the committee before we met as a full committee for the first time. And I got your input and your feedback on those elements that comprise the community engagement framework and tried to the best of my ability to incorporate them, uh, to incorporate your feedback into a new draft. So these are things that everyone on the committee has seen. Most people have given really helpful uh, feedback about. So that's why tonight we, obviously if folks wanna talk about those things, we can make space for it. And I think it's more important for us to begin to have a dialogue with each other about things that we have not had an opportunity to talk about before, which I'm we're proposing tonight be these three things you see in bold, the engagement tactics, the role of the government transition advisory committee, and what you all need to see in monthly community engagement progress reports to ensure that we are hitting our our milestones and making progress in the way that you had intended and to hold the city quite frankly accountable for that progress. And then we're thinking in the next work group meeting, we would hit those um, remaining elements. That's engagement, this is when you start seeing numbers and dates, right? Um, the projections over time, the calendar of when, what, you know, how, and then the, what that means for the schedule of the Government Transition Advisory Committee. So um, before I turn it over to Amy, and, and again, most of you have already kind of said you're okay with, with this general um, set of elements, but I did just wanna ask in a meeting, in a public space, you know, is there anything that you see on this slide that you don't think should be in an engagement plan for the transition? Um, or alternatively, is there something that's missing from this set of elements? I've been told to wait seven seconds, so <laughs> I'm gonna do that. Okay, um, again, lots of opportunities to amend and evolve over time. Thank you for that. Um, next slide, please, Nicole. And I'm gonna turn it over to Amy for the next portion. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I am so grateful to be here and thanks for letting me lead this portion of the meeting. So, um, I wanted to do a quick whip around and just like talk like quickly like things that you all care about getting out of this meeting. We have these two sessions before we take this to the larger session. So we have quite a few things to figure out how to how and what to get done. Um, so I just want to like quickly popcorn out or people could go off mute and say the things that you sort of care about or what are your intentions for this time together. We would just spend like one minute on this. Amy, would you like to start to give us kind of an idea of what you're thinking? Yes, my intention is to hold the intention from the League of Women Voters that we represent the people of Portland and to do everything we can to make this plan get us to as many people in Portland as possible. I care about this committee setting up the larger committee to be effective. We'll go ahead and go. Um, hey there, Zach Curl for this who are listening in um, and this, for me, I'm, I'm particularly interested in the education portion of the engagement. And so I think it was Leah and uh, had some ideas shared in a document that we were working on thinking about how to incorporate uh, the public schools and or just um, soon to be or young, but first time voters. Popcorn to somebody else. 
Oh, I'll just uh, go, go really ahead. fast and then yeah, go ahead, Jane. Um, oh, yeah, I would agree. I think my biggest um, goal here is to make sure that we have a really good list of things that we want to share with people, and then the vehicle best used for sharing that in order to engage loads and loads and loads of people. I mean, I, when the transition plan itself was developed, we were all under COVID and we, you know, you depended a lot on surveys and people who engaged um, online. And now we need to really get out and um, use so getting every, out. Every, every group that we can possibly find. So the number one thing would be to find out who are, who, what partnerships do we have already? Who's already organized and ready so that we could send our first newsletter with, you know, what's new and hot and fun and interesting mm. uh, and get that going. Um, popcorn. The other part is I think that we've got a fabulous. One minute. Thank popcorn, you. popcorn. Fabulous. We're going uh, fast. Okay. Go. Okay. Well, I will go. Uh, I guess my main uh, objective out of these meetings is that we have, uh, um, oh, it's going to be repetitious objectives that are measurable that whatever we're saying we're going to do, that is a way to measure its success in a way that is objective. And so we that's the only way you can hold the city accountable. Otherwise, words, words, words don't, I mean, they're pretty words, but and the thing is that the strategies that are going to be implemented definitely target the populations that are rich to hard, uh, hard to reach. Uh, that's the other piece that are very specific strategies that target those populations and are, therefore, uh, it seems to me that we need to work on um, on, on deciding uh, in terms of resources because those the, that those strategies are going to be a lot of more involved, a lot of more work. So we need that. Those would be my priorities. Great, uh, Jose. For me, the priority is going beyond just listening sessions on Zoom and at the city, but going actually in the community and also to the point of Juanita said, I think, is making a list of every community you want to talk to and seeing what we already have ties to, but also making a point to hit all those communities that we don't, because sometimes those are the ones that usually get forgotten or not as much attention so that we're not just hitting them once, but a couple times to give more community members in different places a chance to know what we're doing. Sweet. Terry, I think... Uh, a couple quick things. Um, I'm, I'm going to focus more on making sure that the engagement is meaningful. Um, and that to me means that the engagement opportunities are early enough to make a difference and that are um, substantive enough for GTAC to learn from them and give advice from them. And the transition can learn from them and get advice from them. Um, those are, that's where my focus is. And the second part of that is to understanding what GTAC's role really is in this whole thing. Sweet. Um, David, are, would you like to talk? Okay, I wanted to just say that out loud at the beginning of this meeting, because each one of us is going to have to mobilize in a pretty big way, and we're going to have to rely on each other. So now every person knows what everybody else in this room cares about, and we need to think about who's in this room. We're here, we care about education, we care about meaningful engagement, we care about measurable, we care about going out into the community. So then let's also think about who's not represented, who isn't on this screen, and how are we going to really like make sure we reach out to those people. So um, I went through our comments that we had submitted and also this kind of presentation that Julia put together. And there's really two things we need to get out of this work group, if you guys can indulge my summary. Um, they are, how do we take the values? Like what are the, what's the hierarchy? Because we only have a limited capacity as an outreach community, realistically. How are we gonna figure out our capacity? How are we gonna, like what set of values are we gonna apply to our decisions? And then we need to do the research. We need to do all the work, which all of these amazing grassroots organizers on this screen like know how to do. So I wanna keep our conversation as we're talking, going through this slide deck that's prepared and really think about like the values that we're going to apply and how are we going to get the work done. So do we want to have kind of 
folks that are holding the values conversation separately and they bring a recommendation, but they don't concern themselves with the lists of folks. Do we want to have different people do different research? Like, how do we want to use all of those talents and intentions that are on this screen to like actually get this stuff done? and not duplicate it, right? Like we have really different talents here. So how do we like really apply them? So uh, first question is that values question, this slide. So is this the right list of tactics? So when we're considering our like really limited engagement capacity or expansive engagement capacity, frankly, all of these people in this room have a like pretty high capacity for organizing and organizational um, like, ability. So maybe we could engage these, but are these the tactics that we want to be um, using? Why or why not? Um, and I wanted to, I don't, I'm going to look where we are in the schedule. We're at seven, it's 622 right now. So we have until 640 for this conversation. So um, yeah, within the framework of what we just talked about, what are the right list of tactics? And I also wanted to see if somebody would be willing to be the secretary for this meeting to take notes. Um, or we could have two sets of notes. One is actions and the other could be like ideas or other things. Julia, could you take notes? Uh, just two clarifying points. So one, uh, this slide and then next, we have until 640. So we oh. may want to preview it and then circle back. Um, and then Nicole is taking notes for us. Okay, great. Nicole, can you specifically write action items so we can organize the notes into like, these are tasks. Um, we can come back to our tasks at the end and kind of everybody can sign up and we can figure out how it'll get done. Um, yeah, so what's the question? Oh, Juanita, I, I think you're on mute. You can go first. I think we take yeah. your comments to like two or three minutes. Yes, yeah. Uh, yes, my first comment is, uh, like you said, in, in terms of having to prioritize, first of all, I want to know what type of resources do we have? Because uh, we've been told that there is contracts with community, it's going to be contracting with community organizations. There's going to be consultants being hired. I mean, it was like $9 million already spent and some of that. So I want to know, what is included in these contracts? Because some of the worthy priorities that we want to do or we want to elect should be part of the work they should be doing. And so how do we want to, or, or priorities should be included in those contracts because that, you know, the way that we think it should be done. That, that would be my the starting point. I know that there will be other work that we will need to do as a committee and committee members and the whole group. Uh, but uh, again, I think that it's important to determine what are the resources, what are the things that we have uh, uh, to, for us to use, and then from there we go, well, then we need to step up and do these other things. And that needs to be done quick. Julia, did you want to address that, or is that a, like a broader, longer question? Uh, let me briefly, but I'm... I think it might also be helpful for me to resend to folks and we can talk about it in the next public meeting as well. Um, the actual budget that was recently approved by city council for the transition. I know folks have seen it before, but it's been a couple meetings um, and you can that answers, I think, the resource question. Um, it is not the case that we have contracts with community based organizations. Um, currently, there is a con, and I am gathering these and we'll send them out to the full committee as requested at the last committee meeting. Uh, the city has a contract with Next Strategies. They are supporting the change management work of the city. Second, the city has a contract with Flow Analytics. Flow Analy Analytics is sort of a GIS demography firm that is supporting the technical map making of the Independent District Commission. The city did recently close something that I think is more relevant to this conversation, which is a request for proposals for a voter education partner. Um, so there will be uh, city dollars going to community-based organizations um, to support voter education for hard to reach voters. Mm -hmm. um, that will absolutely be resourced and we can talk more about, um, I'm happy to share that RFP, it's public record, um, but that is not, I think that's a little bit different than what maybe Juanita was expecting. 
Can you tell us how do you think is different? Oh, well, I, so the first two that I mentioned. Um, no, no, the last one. Oh, no, I think, it's, I think it's absolutely what you're talking about, but it's voter education. It's meant to educate the electorate about how to vote in November 2024, specific primarily about ranked choice voting. And I think, a little, you know, secondarily about districts, I think that might be you know, come come faster. Um, so, but there are many other aspects of the city's transition work, as you all know, beyond educating voters around ranked choice voting and district-based elections. So that's, I guess I was more talking like we should probably explore and I should bring you some, some budgeting around resources separate from voter education specific education and engagement resources. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just don't know. I, I'm just so I'm clear that I understand it, that I'm not confused. Um, so what you're saying is that the RFPs that are being posted with community organizations, those are the ones that are for voting education only and for the other for it. Correct. Vote? Okay. So no for community, well, it's kind of community engagement. Kind. Yeah, okay. Thank, uh, you. okay. Thank you, Anita. I think my question would be along the same lines because we have the budget in, in broader terms, but we need to know how much we would have for getting facilitators at meetings and like and how how far in advance we have to make all those things apparent. Um, I know redistricting just had one and they um, had the League of Women um, uh, voters they facilitated and it was really good but it's those kinds of things like what do we have budget for um specifically um how far in advance we have to ask for that to be released to us or is it just already really like those pieces of those questions i think would help us decide how we plan our future engagement so a question seems to be what resources are available for us to do this engagement like so i guess we can sort of operate in this conversation that that we will be doing it the gtac committee will be both creating this outreach plan we'll be doing the research we'll be googling we're our own consultants um for this <laughs> and then maybe we would love we want to know more about if we could get actual consultants um Terry, you mentioned meaningful um, engagement, and I think this would be kind of a key place of considering that. Do you have, my, um, I'd love to hear from you about what you think about meaningful engagement and how that relates to specifically what kind of events we do. I think my, my main concern, and, and this is gonna be later in our own agenda tonight, is understanding what GTAC's role in engagement is. And, um, and just overall, in terms of engagement, you know, it has to have a purpose. And I think the purpose of the engagement is to draw out ideas and information from the public and then put it into the ears and brains of the people doing the transition. And I, I don't want to be an intermediary translator or just um, passing paper from one event off to somebody else, I want to understand what that, that role is, because I don't want to dilute the public's input into the transition. You've been on similar like bodies, right? Like where you oversaw transition. So how did that, what worked well for those kind of engagement or what, what was meaningful that worked? Well, I, you know, I think uh, how to describe it, you know, the transitions I've been on have been uh, like a governor's transition, uh, uh, the mayor of Baltimore transitions, those sorts of things. Those are political transitions, not so much complete overhauls of, of the government it's space. Um, <laughs> but I, I just think that we have enough on our plate to learn and give it informed advice to the transition on a number of topics. And I think the public should have a direct line to the transition as well. Our, our role is advice as anybody in the public should also 
have that ability to give advice to it. So, uh, so I'm looking towards that and I'm looking for making sure that it's all informed, that we get good information from the transition that we can give good advice. From. So th that's the sort of thing I'm looking for. Yeah. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to call you out. I just thought I'm just trying to stoke some conversation. And we'll, and we'll, and we'll get into it, I'm sure. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, Jane, go ahead. Um, I think there are certain times where the community, our general community, everybody would like and need to know certain things. One being that the number one question I hear when I explain to people that are on this committee is they're really, really interested in the city manager. They want to know where is that? What is that job description? How are you, how are they going to find that person? Is that person going to be from Portland? Please don't let that person be from Portland. We need somebody who's already done this. So, I mean, there are, there are those kinds of things that we know that we have to share that then we can listen and hear back that we can add into them. So, I mean, along that original timeline where um, ideas and things were coming to completion, I think we have to look at that schedule and we have to say, what are the tangible things that we want to share? Not we want to share and tell people, but we want to share so that we can listen back and report in with, with the right kind of timeline. You know, as I said earlier on, when we were pre-chatting is, we really need phenomenal people to run for um, the new council positions. And we're a year and a half from that. And you know, if um, Juanita wanted to run, Juanita needs to know what that job is and um, what it's going to entail. And she needs to know now so she can start saving to run her campaign. So there are those kinds of things which then gets people excited about um, looking at redistricting. And so we'll have information about, you know, what has that work been? You know, so I think there are some, I think as soon as we start to get some tangibles of things that we want to begin to share, then we begin to listen and incorporate and move and change. But I think one of the big lists should be um, what are the tangibles and when do we have tangibles to share? And then the best way of sharing that, what's the right vehicle? Um, yeah, could we call that like a principle, for, a principle yeah. for organizing? We have a few different principles for organizing, right? The timeline, what's going to happen, what's coming up. Yeah. We've got um, communities that we specifically need to reach out to. And we have um, whatever else we want to do, like city council, where it falls in the transition. Um, so I guess I want to put out to the group then, if we're choosing between activities, how are we making that decision? Do we want to choose the um, outreach that serves the most people? Do we want to focus primarily on the marginalized folks? Do we want to engage people who aren't engaged? Can we talk a little bit about like how the decision-making process of how we actually devote our well, I, resources? Yeah, well, I think that uh, I would, I think, I don't think that I would like to see uh, taking resources from the larger community to focus more on one target population. But I think that the system for informing the larger population is already in place. And mm -hmm. it's all of the things that are in the list that are in the plan. So these, the meetings, the, you know, all of those things. But I think that that's a separate issue is, again, we need to target a specific strategies to do the, the more marginalized populations. So I think at the begin with, that will be the thing where how much, uh, how much do we want to invest on that? You know, mm -hmm. so, and do we want to work with the partnerships that are going to be established, or are we? Is there something that we're going to take on our own? To me, that would be the first question. Um, how do we going to handle that? But I think that that is that should be the focus. Thank you. If anybody else has a different opinion, um, I can jump in with some of the just general themes that people shared. So in these questions that Julia had written out and people provided feedback, um, some of the themes that we'd spoken about in there um, that might just be like helpful as far as things that were that are on the mind of this community, of our committee. 
Um, the city has existing pandemic partnerships. Zach has some really good thoughts on existing pandemic partnerships. Also the civic life office um, mm -hmm. has a, like opportunities. So I personally would be interested to know more about what our access to that would be. Um, Juanita had great comments around going out into the community and several other people mentioned the importance of going out and meeting voters and being really mindful that they're not coming to us. So that might be useful in reviewing this list is are we, yeah. what of these tactics are going out to people and what are them are making them come to us. A lot of people mentioned small groups and breakout sessions being completely uh, necessary. And I, as an organizer, very much agree with that because that is a format where people can open up and share. So I very much agree with that. Um, Leah had a lot of really cool media ideas like around being on Think Out Loud or CityCast Portland. And I also loved those ideas because I think like getting in cool media partnerships would be really crucial as far as just getting this out and then being able when we go into the community to say there's a podcast episode about this there's media actually like your favorite local tv host like who are the local celebrities that we could be leveraging um zach and uh, a few others mentioned about educating high schoolers um very cool idea very cool opportunities for tapping into schools how much do we want to include that um yeah so these were the themes that we'd spoken that people had brought up um do we want to maybe just go down this list and talk about these in turn or like everybody could take a second and kind of call out which of these we should be spending time and particularly the ones that julia starred um also if you go to the next slide you know folks have this open Aha. Uh -huh. So this is controversial um, and problematic for a number of reasons, um, but it is worth considering how many people are part of these populations of wrapping our brains around numerically like the impact we're trying to make. Um, Julie yeah. can say more about the, the numbers or where they're from, but... Um, no, I mean, yeah, let me, I'll give some context, but I, I think it does relate sort of to the previous slide. So um, in the community engagement framework, there is an objective about um, investing our, it's kind of to Anita's point, like investing the resources, and I mean resources in a broad way, in your time, right, et cetera. Our team, um, in us. Um, investing the resources that we do have for community education and engagement in communities historically left out of city hall decision making, such as, and then in that framework lists a set of communities that you see on this slide. That list was developed again uh, from the one on ones that I had with committee members. So people added communities by and large uh, to the draft that I had brought all of you. Um, and so I think the question, you know, and then uh, Amy had actually asked, well, you know, what are the size of these communities? Um, so again, there are significant limitations in population numbers, uh, certainly for communities of color. We all know um, the census undercounts certain communities. And then there are communities that are in the framework that the census does not even capture. So I just wanted to be very transparent with you about the source of the population percentage number that you see. Um, for example, houseless Portlanders, we have the point in time count that is, I think, acknowledged as pretty significantly undercounting Portlanders that are unhoused, as well as population numbers for the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, but I did want to give you citations um, just, just as an example. And so, you know, I do think there's a question of, you know, is it the case that we want to invest the resources that we do have um, in reaching and engaging communities historically left out of city hall decision making? If that is accurate, what, is, what exactly does that mean to you? What does that mean for us collectively? And then to go back a slide, right? What does it mean in terms of how we prioritize the work that we do? Yeah. Thanks. No, I, I uh, thank you for the data. It's very, it's, it's very good to have it. 
But I think that when we talk about these, the communities that are listed in this document, th there is a large number of uh, community organizations that are already working with these populations. So how do we support their efforts to do yeah. the things that we're interested in and how do they support that effort? That is going to be critical. Otherwise, I will never um, recommend that we do our own thing and try to go reach these populations. But on the other hand, uh, I'm concerned that we may end up saying, well, no, there are too few of them. We don't want to spend all our efforts there because there's so few, which has been usually historically why we has never been a real attempt to reach them. So to me, that would be a real concern. Uh, so how do we, again, that's what I'm keeping going back to the fact that how do we develop these strategies that target them to do it and again, you know, it can be through partnerships. There's organizations who are willing to, you know, they're already working with them. So we can work with them and see how to support them. And that's what is important to know about the resources. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'm wondering as I'm looking at this, is that maybe that this is the start of our research project of what you were saying of the groups that are already working in these areas. Mm -hmm. Perhaps this research already exists and we don't need to do it, but perhaps this is a pretty easy way and we can even add other line items like we care about, um, you know, like whoever we care about and sort of or whatever groups we're sort of broadly trying to reach. And then this kind of becomes the start of our research where we divide it up, we try to get as many organizations that already exist or ideas yeah. to these communities. And then our yeah. next meeting, we come back and we kind of say, okay, here's the list of everybody we thought of, exactly. like what, how, how to organize exactly. this. Okay. Exactly. So we can add to this too. This is just what was um, enumerated out in the yes. document that Julia synthesized. Um, is are folks okay with that as a starting place to do at least to at least start getting kind of our list of groups that we need to make sure we really are in good faith reaching out to we're starting soon we're doing it now yes. and that at least we come back to the full committee with like we can do whatever but like this all needs to have like these groups need to happen for sure and we you know make it a manageable yes amount. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think I think the question of our capacity needs to be like sort of a two end problem. Like partially we need to determine what our capacity is, but we also need to determine like what is the right, like what amount of engagement needs to happen. Like if we, more than we have capacity to do, how do we grow our capacity? Because this is like a one time task. You know, we have a responsibility to like do this right now. So um, yeah, I love that idea. I love that. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, Zach, you mentioned your partnerships with City Life. Could you say more about that and how what you know about that and what you're kind of what avenues you're aware of existing? Yeah, so I was just gonna say, like I don't know, Julia, you might be able to uh, help facilitate a kind of partnership with Civic Life and at least getting insights from the I don't know how better put it, database of organizations that the city has been involved with. Um, I'm fairly sure that Jamie Duhamel was involved with um, the volunteer effort within the emergency, uh, uh, city emergency for the pandemic, in which there might be some kind of archival resource that we can um, tap into, but there are, you know, the emergency the city's emergency uh, department is probably, you know, the bureau has um, probably well, emergencies. Uh -huh. They're obviously have good community. Yeah. Systems. Yep. Yep. So, you know, I think we should be thinking about civic life, but we should also be thinking about like the net, uh, which is the uh, neighborhood emergency teams, which they will be connected to community members and could be a potential outlet that it's not the kind of prototypical CBOs. Do you still have relationships with either of those organizations from your time in City Hall? Uh, probably they're still there, yeah. Like, is um, that like you could talk to somebody and yeah. kind of, you, the, you would know who to talk to? Sure, yeah. So the question, I guess, is whether it should be coming from GTAC or should it be coming from the transition team? Um, and that I don't know the answer to. It's Maybe it should be. We work for the voters. We're authorized to work for the voters. Yeah. Us. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, so so maybe what we do then is um, start from more or less a, a blank canvas of, you know, we put some time in documenting all the different organizations and uh, potential starting points for uh, for getting outreach. And then it's a matter of us uh, connecting with those individuals, cross-checking to make sure that these community organizations, you know, these um, communities that we want to reach that are hardest to reach are represented in that space. Um, but, you know, thinking like houseless Portlanders, like maybe we present to the um, joint office, uh, they have public meetings that um, are represented often by government um, uh, agencies and and some of the organizations that are working have contracts with joint uh, with the joint office, but um, are also represented by um, the public who are interested in what's happening for houseless yeah. Portlanders. So. I, I think that's maybe an avenue to go is just to kind of like think, have these these communities the focal point, but also think broadly and documenting these ideas that such that we can kind of. Could you add those as line items? Like if we're all working on like a yeah. shared Excel doc or something like we, yeah, that would be you good. kind of think a group should be there, mm -hmm. like put it there. And then we'll kind of all collectively work. And then next week or next time when we meet, we could go through and we can have this values conversation in a more like really concrete way. Like, okay, but yeah. these are, this is what we are aware of. I think it's going to, if everybody does some Googling and takes some part of the list. Um, and yeah, that would be good. What you yeah, there, yeah. There's the, I don't remember the name of the newspaper that they put for the houseless. They sell it for a dollar. Street Roots. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I still have connections perfect. with Street Roots and stuff. Perfect. Yeah. So they should we set up for the time to have like an idea contribution time or people can just do it before the next meeting? Yeah. Yes. That would yeah, be great. Okay. And I talked to people on um, AARP, is you know the organization, and uh, they have uh, access to a lot of the Native American, uh, Asian, and Pacific Islander population. Yeah. And there's good contacts there, also I can contact them and find out. Uh, actually, they're already uh, expressing interest and in being supportive of this effort. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Terry's so, point is valid, and so I actually am. Uh, I met with somebody who worked at uh north point solutions i wanted to say is the organization mm -hmm. but who is working with the charter commission pretty closely and can maybe be a way of connecting i don't know maybe somebody in this in this work group or on our committee is well connected with the charter commission such that we can get that kind of information to help kind of jump start some of our work but um that's a really good idea are you connected to them terry here. Oh no. Oh, Julia. Okay. Julia can provide it. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So it sounds like we have um, a research project to do. So, and we yeah. have like, I'm kind of hearing streams of work that are emerging. One is this research project, which I think everybody should be contributing to. Is anybody a really good ace at setting up something like that? Like that just really makes great co communal organized spreadsheets. Why don't, why don't we just get what Julia has. I'm guessing it's probably a SharePoint file or something that's like online that's shareable and then yeah, we can geez, just organize it yeah. as such. It's probably already organized would be my guess. Um, so oh, so we're yeah, not yeah. starting from a blank canvas, which is good. And we can just augment what we know is not represented with an intention of representing these communities more fully. And, and then in I would, case. yeah, okay. go ahead, Amy, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. I don't to go ahead. Well, I, I'm, I'm maybe jumping the gun, but I think there's like a another critical task that we might want to think about, which is like ensuring that we frame those conversations um, in the similar way that we're asking city officials uh, in our own meetings, which is like, what are the specific questions that we want feedback on? It gets to Terry's point of like, we want quality in the advice and the feedback. And so like I, I wrote in the chat about like doing a survey instrument, obviously that's like a particularly scientific terminology, but like we could, we could draft our own questions, maybe based 
in part on the letter that we received from Mike, uh, Michael Jordan or Mike Jordan. So like that could be a really good starting point. And then we can just refine those questions to be, um, you know, with an angle of who, who our audience is. Would you be willing to do a draft of that, Zach? Would you need a partner? Of those questions? Is that work you have the capacity to shake on in the next week? Um, shake on? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do we, Julie, do we have like a, like a, I guess it's like we have a city e email. Do we have the ability to access like SharePoint and create our own files or do we need to be doing that? Like I'm imagining they're going to be public documents. So um, do you have to be creating these things that we can then uh, edit? I'm actually looking at Nicole. Yeah, I think. I mean, I can now share, yeah. like we can share documents with each other because you all have city email addresses. Is that mm -hmm. correct, Nicole? Yeah, that's correct. So we need to start the original document and then share it out. So um, only staff um, have the ability to like to create, create the blank yeah. Word document. Or I'm tell assuming them, that was the case. Which we totally that makes sense. That's a good policy. Do, <laughs> and then we can share it out and that way it lives on our servers and can be reserved. It's easier for us to share on the transition website. It's easier for us to share it as a um, uh, as a public document for the future for archival yeah. purposes. Yeah, yeah, and then it could also, you know, even as a working document of the questions that we want to be asking, we yeah. could also that could be grabbing public input of what what other questions the public wants to be asked, right? Um, so I think. Nicole, I don't want to assume, but I'm guessing that it's probably an Excel or some kind of spreadsheet for the, the work that the Charter Commission created. And then I think of just a blank Word document for the questions would be efficient, like sufficient for getting this started. And I can start mm -hmm. adding. In the Excel sheet, it would be helpful if we could call out any affiliations that we have or contacts. Yeah. Like, so for example, Juanita, it sounds like you have quite a few existing contacts. I think mm -hmm. as a committee, we should do everything in our power to leverage our contacts. Yes. Um, because that's what we're bringing to the table here. So everybody should like that. I think that's like the mentality we need to bring to the group is like leveraging our networks yeah. um, in addition to going out into the community. But like, how are we? capitalizing on the, the power we have in the room. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing this right now for a report. And so I've got a general idea where we would want to, you know, have a column that relates to if we've reached out to them so we can kind of tap track that going to one well, is your point, like we need it to be measurable. <laughs> um, and then maybe something that indicates that we've reached out, although we have this tracking form that is a way of documenting that. Um, but then there's, uh, you know, who, who's most closely affiliated or willing, and that way we can kind of like spread the assignments for doing this outreach. Yeah, that would be great. Um, if, yeah, there's, uh, I was thinking about all of the Head Start programs in the city who serve the very low income population and they Destiny had a similar idea. Destiny works with Head Start, doesn't she? Yes. I don't yeah, know. That, yeah, I think true. that's a fantastic resource. That yeah, because they, they they're required to have parent meetings. Oh, what? Yes, they do. They're required. And this is actually part of their, you know, uh, to involve them in their own, uh, you know, development for voting and all things like that. So this is perfect. It fits right there. And I can, um, I will, I'm not so sure the grantee for the county, but I will find out. Uh, I'm sure there's the one for... Um, Eastern Oregon, East part of Oregon, where is uh, Ron Herndon, his program is there. So I'm sure I would make sure that I touch base with him too and other people. Yeah. Great. But I also, I mentioned in my comments also that it would be important to get feedback from those organizations yeah. about our efforts, because that also um, is something that can be measured. You know, uh, you know, what are the things that we did right? What are the things that didn't work? You know, what other kind of support you needed, you know, to make it this more effective because then, you know, again, all of these issues about all of the reasons why these populations don't get engaged. So we want to find out more. I think that would be another good uh, way to do it. It's part of the accountability aspect. 
That brings up a question I had, which I don't know if this is in the communications plan, so apologies if that's the case, but I'm wondering what our inbox situation is. Is there like GTAC at Portland, Oregon? And then who's maintaining that? And how are we synthesizing that information? Because I think the more outreach we do, we're also going to get quite a bit of inbound. And so how are we going to manage and like thoughtfully, like could somebody be assigned to that? Like I've, like I've got ideas, but I kind of think like, that a way the way that a lot of this stuff might get managed is that we like kind of assign people on the committee like these two are the communication like the email czars these people are wordsmiths and they're just doing collateral these people are just maintaining our lists like we kind of need to think about these mechanics because yes. the mechanics are where this stuff will really break down um, well, um, wouldn't the person that is going to be hired, Julia, would be perfect to help us with that because that's the staff person that is going to be the engagement coordinator. So yes, we need to and and I can also um, seating. Yeah, I, I know Nicole can probably speak well to. Uh, I mean, we have information coming in to the city transition team in a wide variety of ways, very intentionally. Um, and many of which are not able to be monitored by a volunteer, right? The call, all the calls that come into 311, all the calls, all the surveys that people fill out for public comment. Like there's a variety of ways. And that to me is how we are required to report back to you everything that is coming into us. Um, so I, 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 if Nicole, if you wanna speak to it, I will also note though, we are 20 minutes over. Um, where we were supposed to be. And I think to Terry's point, I would like to have some, I, I get the list, we'll make a Sorry, list, yeah. you know? So it's like, I think, and, and we do, like, I have a good list to give you as a starting point only, right? Um, but I think to, to Terry's earlier point, having some dedicated time to talk about particularly the role of the Government Transition Advisory Committee in everything that, that we've been sort of on the edges of, um, I would love to get there if we could. Thanks. Yeah. Just to apply that the public inbox transition at portlandoregon.gov is monitored by myself and Diana um, on the transition team, as well as there's a bunch of other ways that um, the communities and uh, can reach out to us, including our online survey, which I monitor, um, where folks can submit public comment, and then every all of the public comment from every meeting is distilled. Um, I work on all the public comment reporting. Um, I've caught us up through March because um, that is, it is a lot of work to do from the public comments. Um, I've caught us up through March. I'm hoping to catch us up um, and be doing monthly report outs um, right at the, uh, the first week of the month. Um, but we, we are almost there. And I know that we have um, public comment reporting um, and sort of a distillation of that. And then I'm always uh, coming at the next GTAC meeting. And then I'm always happy to say if you're interested in learning more about X or Y, um, adding more details to those public comment reports. Um, and then we post all of the raw public comment that we receive on the transition website. Um, I will post March comments tomorrow morning, um, but everything from election day um, through the end of February was posted this last week. Um, it's just a lot of work just to, we receive a lot of public yeah, comments. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, thank you so um, much, Nicole. Going through that, so that, that's something that we can do here in the staff level. Yeah, to close out, I, I do just want to make sure that we have a GTAC representative to receive the feedback, like you giving us the feedback, I think is part of it, but then somebody on our, our team, you know, that's like absorbing it and is like in charge of like synthesizing it and making sure that the broader community is getting it. Um, okay, so to move forward, um, the role of the Government Transition Advisory Committee, I think the next slide. All right, so just to read at you all from the city council report committee responsibilities include maintain open consistent engagement with internal state and external stakeholders. Um, ensure input is meaningfully integrated into the city's implementation and serve as the primary solicitor and repository of transition related public input. So yeah, how do we ensure that we get to the, the June 6th meeting and we've got like an, a, a baked out idea of what this looks like.
Terry, go ahead. All right. Well, here's here's the the part that I worried about when I when I saw this. Um, you know, we as the GTAC are supposed to be giving advice to the transition, advice to the city on a variety of topics. Um, but it seems like this puts us in an additional role of being the funnel of um, transition related public input, which I, I don't know that that's really a good role for us, but that's, that's something to discuss. Um, you know, we are, the transition should be the tr primary solicitor and repository. Um, and they should be listening to public input that's being given to the transition. You know, sorting through public comments is their job too, I think. Um, so if, if, if the staffing is such um, that the primary solicitor and um, repository is the same staff who's staffing GTAC, then I guess it kind of sorts itself out a little bit, but the, the roles are, are, are not clear. Um, I, I, I hope we can help ensure that input is meaningfully integrated, but I, I'd like to think that GTAC has its own role um, separate and apart from that. And we may disagree with the transition team on things, and we, we may give recommendations that are different from what the transition is doing and uh, that independence is gonna be important too. So blurry, the blurry roles need to be sorted out, I think. But that's, that's the concern and we can talk about it. I think you're muted, Juanita. Um, and Jose has had his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Go okay. Ahead. Go ahead, Jose. I just wanted to respond to what Terry said. I guess I never thought that the city just wanted our opinions. Like, I never thought that we were on the commission just because they wanted our opinions of us, group of less than 20 citizens. But I thought we represented different parts of the city. So we were then going to help get the opinions of all the people that we also represent. I, I guess I never, it never crossed my mind that we were in this commission just because of our own personal opinions. Um, so you saying that Terry is like, I, it hadn't even crossed my mind. So that I, I guess that is something we need to talk about because I never even considered it. Yeah, I guess, you know, just to, to answer that real quickly, the, the folks that were, put on this commission have certain expertise and backgrounds. And, and I think that expertise comes with it. And we are not only representative of the public, um, but we're experts in our fields in a way. So that independence comes with the appointment. Yes. Um, yeah. And can I go now? Okay. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, again, um, thank you for bringing that concern up. Um, this is my concern too. Um, and, and I, I'm, I'm, it's not like, a, it's not like I don't, I don't, I didn't think that I need, was going to do any work other than give my opinion. But on the other hand, uh, we've been being asked about the budget. And we've been asked specifically, uh, are there enough resources for the work that needs to be done? So I think that we have, uh, I, I don't think that any in the group is with, uh, minds doing some extra, you know, like doing the research for the organizations and other things that we may end up doing. But on the other hand, I think that it's just reasonable that the committee have the staff in support that we need because most of the group works and they have their own responsibilities already too. So, um, so we're volunteering, we're bringing the expertise, we're willing to do some of the work, but at the same time, I think that it's important that, that we have appropriate and sufficient staffing 
uh, to do the work that we need to do. I, I don't anticipate that there will be a lot of discrepancies between the larger GTAC group and us. I think that we're pretty much in the same, uh, you know, kind of the same of objectives or the same goal. But um, but I also, I, I got a little bit concerned about when we are being told, you need to tell us, are there enough resources? Are there enough resources? You have to approve the budget and tell us where do we need to, to do changes. And so we haven't given that opportunity because we didn't know. I mean, this is the first time we are really getting our hands into the actual work that we're supposed to be doing and looking into the scope of the work that needs to be done. And so to me, that that's, um, I kind of show you some concern, Terry. Uh, and um, I don't know where to take that up later on because um, when I we look into the budget, it's a very general. We don't have any detail. We don't have anything that says, you know, I mean, it's just big numbers by category. So, but anyway, so I just want to share that. Thank you. Uh, Zach, go ahead. Yeah, I I mean, I I share your concern, Terry, and I, I like, I'm, I've been lately thinking about this role as more of like a board, like basically providing advice um, based off of our expertise, but also doing voluntary work for the city to try to improve its community engagement. And I think, you know, I speak for myself, I'm a relatively young professional, like my expertise is from the community that I work with and, and I'm a part of. And so, you know, this doesn't get to the point that we're trying to reach hard to reach voters. So that's a separate thing. But I do think that we want to document, we want, we want to both be invested in getting, soliciting that expertise, which is broader than ourselves and bring it into the space, but also to, to try to do some of this like volunteer, Terry, like, you know, it's a volunteer role of really reaching out to some of these hard to reach um, communities that yes, the city is, um, you know, in a perfect world, able to resource and like see out the vision that we set, but we're going to need to help them. And so I think if we can identify those organizations, if we can provide them with, um, you know, a way of activating those those organizations, activating those communities to solicit the feedback, and then the city is is in the responsibility of digesting, reflecting, and responding to that feedback. Um, and so, it, yeah, it is definitely a delicate balance, and it can also get like way out of proportion of wow, this is a volunteer role that has become a full-time job. And, you know, I think a lot of people are wary of that because they are professionals and or juggling a lot of other responsibilities. And um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It was more of a statement than anything, but. Yeah, can, can we can we bring this question back to the full group and the next meeting regarding the budget? Do we want to do that? It's about what the role of the GTAC should be, or about what the, what the budget, what we have budget for. Yeah, and, and in general, um, uh, in terms of, um, in terms, yeah, what type of resources do we have for the work that needs to be done, uh, and the staffing? I don't know if there is uh, the issues with the, you know, I, I know Julia, you probably are already overwhelmed, and as well as uh, Nicole. And so I know that you hiring an extra person that would be very helpful for the group to work on this. Uh, but um, just in terms, of, and I don't know in terms of the 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 role of this group. Yeah. I, again. That, yeah. Yeah. Maybe these are questions we could kind of communally muse on in the same way that we did in this um, in this format. You know. It's very broad. Yeah, yeah the, the big question, this is a seems, seems like something that we sort of really do need to like write out and wrestle with, like what is yeah. the role of this committee? I very much um, hear what, um, like, you know, the, the like intention to get out into the community and cover all the ground. Yeah, that's fine. Held at the same time as the intention to make this like a volunteer role, consult. Um, maybe there's a world in which kind of both things are happening at once. Um, 
So yeah, could we sort of table that and, and contribute our comments there? Terry, do you want to go again? Oh, Julia? Yeah, I just want to um, follow up on something Zach said that makes some sense and and take a look at the, at the words on the slide a little bit. Um, considering our, ourselves and, and by ourselves, I, I think I'm talking about this subcommittee yeah. as the board of not, I don't know, a board, not an oversight board or board of directors or something, but just like a community neighborhood association board or something <laughs> on, on the engagement. Okay. And we have, um, we have the, we have the role of engagement and we, we, we have that level of advice giving and volunteering if we can. But I think when it, on the on the slide where it says the committee responsibilities include, yeah, I think I think it's not really the committee, but the transition responsibilities include open and consistent engagement with the stakeholders and ensure it's meaningfully integrated, and primary solicitor and repository. I, I think those are the transitions problems. <laughs> um, and that the engagement team, which is Julia and new staff and, and the, the infrastructure around that, um, who answer to you know, Michael Jordan, that's the, that's the engagement team. And am I wrong thinking it, about it that, that way? And I, I need Julia kind of to speak advise but it, but that makes sense to me it makes more sense to me yeah i definitely you know was not the creator of the government transition advisory committee right um this body is very different than the two that are mandated by the voter approved charter amendments the independent district commission and the salary commission that have clear sort of independent legal authority to make certain decisions um, you know, this really is um, a council creation, and council was clear, council can also change its minds if that's the ask. Um, that would be a topic of significant conversation for the full committee, but so far the way that city council has envisioned the work of this group is in writing, in right, a council report document that you see on the screen, right? And so um, I, I can't, I apologize, I can't remember who said it earlier. Maybe it was Zach. I mean, I have envisioned as, the, as your staff support, you know, two things, right? Uh, the advisory role, which is advising city council, the chief administrative officer and folks like me who spend their days working on the transition. Um, and two, um, doing proactive community education and engagement about the transition. And then the intersection of those things, which I think Jose said before he had to drop off, which is it isn't just about the advice of 20 brains, right? But it's rather you all bringing the, what you hear from community to help inform the advice that you give to city council, the chief administrative officer and the transition team. And I've heard the request for greater clarity on the capacity around community education and engagement. And I think I can sign up for that task. Um, you know, and, and part of it though, is you are part of that capacity, right? Um, you know, I, I'll have to go back and look, but I, I think the expectation of time commitment was something like 12 hours a month we will probably move to something like monthly meetings in the fall. So meeting, prep for meeting, that kind of thing is probably, you know, we can figure this out as a group, but it's probably a third of your time commitment. The rest of it, I think the intent of city council, and I, I, I think I can say for the transition team, our expectation was the rest of that time was that you being in community engaging folks. Um, and that, that what we're trying to figure out as this work group right now it, is what is our plan for how to do that? And what do we wanna to propose to the full committee for its consideration? Again, that's how people have been thinking. Thinking can evolve and change, um, but that was, I think that's where I'm coming from in city council and Mike you know, have been thinking about the work. Thanks. Yeah, Jane, yeah, go ahead. You've had your hand up for a minute. Sorry about that. 
Oh, you're muted. You can hear you. Mute. Jane, you're on mute. Jane, Jane, you're still on mute. Jason. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, um, when Julie and I talked in our one-on-one -on -one to begin with, I, I, I wanted clarity as to about what the role was and about the amount of time that we would send. And she basically said, your, your job is to help us with the community outreach plan and, and go do that. Who do you know? You know, where, what teams have you served on? And I'm very eager to do that. And I think this conversation has brought one thing ho home to me. And that is that, that the city has different departments that probably do different kinds of outreach at different, at, at different times. And this is probably the first massive under one umbrella community outreach strategy. And um, we need to help the city develop help the city develop that plan. And we're on our way with the fabulous leadership of Amy to sort of begin to put the lists of people that, that we know. The city already has neighborhood associations. We can, we can start there. And I commit, and I would much rather spend time actually going to my own three local neighborhood associations. And I served on the Old Town Chinatown Community Association for 10 years and going back to them and doing that kinds of stuff. So I think that that's what I understood my role to be. And, mm -hmm. and exactly from the city council report too. And that's where I would like to spend most of my time. I'd love to help develop the list. I'd love to use any consultant that we have to say this is the biggest low hanging fruit first, biggest bang for the buck, and then go after the harder to reach and the least engaged folks and do something cool there. But I'm, you know, I, I'm ready for the plan of the things that we're going to go and share and, and to go and do that. And, um, and just one other thing is that, you know, in my past life, I developed relationships with the Asian reporter. Um, with the newspapers that serve the black community. And that is a huge place to start because they can reach lots of people. They can reach lots of people with a wonderful story and a request for help straight out of the block. So we do really need to get with the media team too because the, the media outlets do it big and they do it fast. And there's great TV and so we, yeah. So I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And I prefer to do less reading of documents and less meetings and 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 more um, hands on as soon as we've got some cool stories to share and some questions to ask. Thanks, Jane. Um, well, uh, yeah, my, my kind of comment and then I'll kind of close this out as the from a meeting perspective is that uh, I think we should do all do what we want to do and what we can contribute like um, Terry and Zach you guys have like very specific knowledge that would be very valuable to the city administrators in a way that like the community folks I think everybody doing whatever they're best at is how this is going to work. Uh, we have an opportunity to represent as many people who aren't in the room by putting our eyes on every single document putting our eyes everywhere we are we should be on this on like every level <laughs> because there's not that many chances where the government reorganizes. So how can we amplify every one of our perspectives? Um, yeah, so everybody should do what they wanna do. And, um, and I think the quicker we kind of identify the streams, like who are the writers, who are gonna be the media people, like Julia really started that work in her organizing, but I think the more we understand our own organization as a team, as a wider GTAC team that, that we might get further. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, comment. Can I ask a quick question um, before we kind of try to wrap things up? So with the people who are here, um, I know it's not the full work group, but there was a, a initial idea of having like a media media liaison or something along those lines who could, you know, I think the original intention was to be responsive to input, but I think we also need to be proactive. Well, I'm seeing two minutes. Maybe it's both. It was the intent. Um, but it, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Please go ahead. Yeah, I think there's more to share here. And so I'll I'll not do it all verbally right now. And also the full committee needs the exact same information. So 
Um, there is a communications and media plan for the transition. Um, always evolving, right? Open to change, not written in stone. Um, and that is led by, back to the capacity question, members of our team whose sole focus is communications and media. The media strategy is not solely a reactionary strategy, but has a proactive media relations strategy. We have an incredible list from doing charter review. We know all the reporters who are tracking transition, right? Um, and, and what those stories are. And, and I, I haven't had an opportunity to share all that information with the full committee, but um, completely exists. There is also a media and communications guidelines document that you will all receive soon that talks about how to, uh, what to do uh, if, if a media person calls you as a GTAC member, not as an individual human being, uh, which you certainly are as well, um, and how to sort of manage things on social media. Um, and right now the bylaws have the co-chairs as the primary uh, media relations folks on behalf of GTAC. But usually what happens, and I think it says this in the bylaws, is that co-chairs can assign folks, but it is important uh, for the transition and for relationships with media that these things be tracked and we know about them, right? So like if Amy, if someone, if a reporter calls Amy, Amy should let me know before Amy does an interview with that reporter, right? Because we probably have a whole relationship. Often staff can do background first to find out what it is they want to like ask about, and then we can also figure out is Amy the right person or maybe it's something more in Zach's wheelhouse, right? Um, so we have all of that stuff in place. Obviously, again, uh, we can change it if it isn't meeting your needs, but all of that stuff exists. Um, thanks for qualifying that, Julia. Um, I mean, yeah, maybe if there's um, something to include about that, but um, as far as next steps, I wanna just transition us into next steps and talk about kind of our marching plans for the week um, until we come back and come at, come at this again. Um, I think what the steps that I kind of have written down were that folks were going to um, collectively go through this list that, um, that uh, either Nicole or Julia is gonna start, it'll be an Excel sheet and we're gonna put in every kind of contact, every group that we're aware that exists in each category. And if you think there should be another category, add that. And adding whether you have what contacts you already have. Um, and then I think we could add media contacts in there as well. Um, like that's worth like collecting. Um, and then we will come back next time and talk kind of more specifically through that list. How do we think about it? How do we present it to the larger group? Um, talk a little bit more, um, maybe, uh, it's possible to do a collective kind of one of these documents to take comment about what the role of the committee is, if everybody could get their comments in there, if you have strong feelings, so we can come around, come back to that and have a good discussion next time. Nicole, was there other action items that were missed? Yep, I have a couple of action items for staff around continuing from the last GTAC meeting around sharing out the RFP and contractors and the budget that was just approved by City Hall for this next year. Um, I also have that we're starting a doc um, so that Zach can start thinking through the drafting of the questions that we want to ask that stem from Mike Jordan's email. Um, and then uh, flagging for folks the raw public comment that is now on the website. Um, and then reviewing uh, looking at time and talking with the co-chairs around reviewing and sending bylaws around communications and media guidelines out are the ones that I have as well. I have one more and um, it came from Jane, I believe, and I know I would appreciate it. And maybe it could also just be a shared doc and I could put all your names on it and if you have time. Um, but this question of, you know, if you look at the schedule of the transition, um, the decisions that need to be made over the next, you know, year and a half. What are those key moments in your mind? And not just you, like, not just Julia, but like, Julia, with all I know, and all the relationships I have in community and all the things that I hear and all the conversations I'm a part of, what are those moments that I think we really need to be planning way ahead, 
to Terry's point, that early, you know, meaningful engagement. I would just be really curious across us, you know, are there ones we all said, or are there ones where we're outliers? Um, again, it shouldn't take too much time, but just kind of a bulleted list if folks have, have the opportunity. Thanks. I can go through in advance and synthesize our comments again so we can kind of start this. So I'll try to get the comments synthesized if folks can do this on the earlier side of the week. I'll try to synthesize it so we people have time to review it before. So submit your comments. Let me synthesize it. We'll review again. Responding to Julia's comment, maybe one way of going about this is just having a separate space within this like document that archives all the different organizations is to like recommended timing for for outreach uh, as well so that we can kind of coordinate that knowing that you know maybe for one community it makes a lot more sense you know for example in doing outreach to unhoused during or like shortly after the point in time which of course just passed but like things of that nature where it's it brings attention um and and activates people in a civic way of communities and that way we can kind of harness that civic engagement. That's great. Um, Amy, I don't want to take over. Are you OK if we skip? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. I just want to kind of, I, I won't take us over seven. Wrap it up. Also, for the recording, for folks who might be listening, I want to make sure we cover some things. Um, it, Thank you. Um, so just as a reminder, right, we've recorded this. It will be on the website. I'll definitely kind of proactively share out a link to the full committee. I think many of whom would be interested in listening, but certainly community folks can listen as well. Um, I did want to see, uh, so our next work group meeting is Wednesday, June 7th, same time, 6 to 7.30 p.m. Is anyone interested in playing a role like Amy did tonight? Practice, practice. I don't know, Zach, I see you. No, it's okay. You don't have to. I'm just, I want to give it a moment. I mean, I, I can, I can try to be this schedule hound. I think, Amy, you did a really good job. So I've got big shoes to fill, but um, I will, okay. I will do my best in that role. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate it. Um, and then can you just go, I just have one more slide, uh, Nicole. So just, I just want to remind folks again about kind of where we're going. Um, so, you know, this next week is about all the to do's um, that Nicole and Amy just shared with us. Uh, we will meet again on June 7th. Um, the reason the to do's are more in this week is so I can send information out to you at least a week before the next work group meeting. So you're digesting and thinking and it isn't like you're looking at it for the first time. So most of the to do's, um, I, I hope uh, we can get pretty far in the next week. Um, and then the idea is that this work group at our next meeting would not only continue these conversations, but would plan how this work group wants to present its work to date. Uh, to the full committee at its June 20th meeting. And so again, I uh, am committed to always sending out meeting materials a week before a meeting. So that's why whatever we might share uh, with the full committee on June 20th, I wanna be able to distribute to the committee on June 13th. So that's why you see sort of dates that you're like, why can't we take another week? And it's just so people have information ahead of time that they can digest. Um, and for community, all of the meetings, again, on the schedule um, are already up on the transition website. In one minute, any questions or, or burning I just issues? See if we could follow up with the people who weren't the other committee members who weren't here today to like, just give them like the to do's. I'm, I'm happy to do that. But. Yeah, and I think they also want to watch the recording. So um, it'll probably be, you know, I'll send this to them. It usually takes um, me until the next day for just the video to process and to get the link up on online in a shareable format. Um, but it'll probably be up sometime tomorrow. We'll have the notes when Nicole can do it. And I think we have clear to do. So um, those will go back out to all of you as well as the folks that weren't able to join us tonight. Okay. Pretty good, 7.30.
7 30. thank you all so much and thank you amy for stepping up thank have you good to see everybody thank you everybody have a good night